Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, warm introduction. Um, I will try to be, uh, to be brief. I know you heard uh, a lot about what's going on. You saw with your own eyes. And I think it's uh, important uh, the, to testify on things that you see with your own eyes. No one can tell you lies once you are underground in Eretz Israel, in the land of Israel. You, it's the land that the eyes of the Lord are on it always, and you share this point of view when you are in Israel and you look at the reality with your own eyes, and then you can go and, and testify to your communities, to your friends, and sometimes we need to testify to people who are not so friendly, but still it's important that they will hear the truth because the world, as we all know, is full of lies. Um, and I want to, um, I think we cannot uh, imagine, um, I, I personally could not imagine um, that we will see with our own eyes uh, what's, what's David, King David, wrote about in Psalms, in, in Psalms 83. Uh, with our own eyes we see that the nation, some, and the leadership, and, and this psalm always makes, makes it important to talk about the leadership because many, many times we see that the leadership of the nations of the world is confused, to say the least, is not aligned with truth and reality and the words of God. They are not aligned, but the people mainly are connected. And that's why this psalm talks many about the leadership of the nations of the world. And, and it says, with cunning they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. And then the psalm goes and lists basically all the nations of the world of that time. And today you would say the ICC, the ICJ, the international entities that conspire together that the name of Israel will be remembered no more. And it's not against Israel they are conspiring. And that's what King David says. He says they are against you. They are against the Lord. Because if you go against the people of Israel, it's not that someone in some distant country, in some, that they never saw Israelis, or they never knew a Palestinian, that they care so much about the people of Israel to fight against us, to spread lies against us. They care because they have a fight with with God, with the Lord. And, and that's why, despite the fact that we are, we, sometimes when you go to Hague or you go to the United Nations building in New York, Israel and Israeli ambassadors can feel they are alone. But of course, Israel is never alone. Israel is never alone because we have God. But Israel is also never alone because we have you. Because we have you that follow the words of the Lord. And that's why we are never alone, because everyone who cares about truth is with us. And that's, that's of course, gives us a lot of hope. And that's also the hope that King David in Psalms 83 says, cover their faces with shame, Lord, so that they will seek your name. May they ever be ashamed and dismayed May they perish in disgrace. Let them know that you, whose name is the Lord, that you alone are the most high over all the earth. And when they will, and when they will know that, they won't have a fight with Israel. And that's the hope. That's the hope. And this hope is extremely important when you see what you saw, what you, the places that you went to. In this visit, in other visits, I know many of you visited in other occasions since October 7th. When you see this kind of evil, 
you see what happens that for 10, some places maybe 20 hours, evil has control over the land. When the evil has control over the land for 10 hours, for 20 hours, we know what they do with it. They don't grow anything. They kill, they rape, they murder, they dismember people, they do the most horrific things man can imagine. Because that's what happens when the, when the Lord is just not present. Of course, he's present always, but they don't feel it. They are fighting against him and they are fighting against his people. And the fact that you came here to Jerusalem to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And again, now, now, in this year, in the very moment that we stand here, the simple saying, who those who pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Jerusalem will be at peace by themselves, is very, very clear. For many, many years, maybe we did not really understand the full extent of this sentence. What is the connection if I sit in some distant country and I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, how does it affect me? How does it give me peace? But when we saw that the same enemy is rising at the same time all around the world against, against again, I, would, I can make an easy job for myself and say against the Jews, but it's not only against the Jews, it's against the presence of Hashem, of God, all around the world, just in the same time. And that's why we know that the people who pray for the peace of Jerusalem will be at peace by themselves. I want to really thank you for coming here. I want to thank you for your prayers today and every day. And I want to thank you for the support and the love that you show to Israel, to the land of Israel, to the people of Israel, and to the people of Hashem. Thank you very much.